Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Drama 13 and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to record screenshots using QuickTime Player. This will be part one of my three part series on how to make YouTube videos. Part two will be how to, how to edit your QuickTime footage with iMovie and part three will be how to upload your videos to YouTube and annotations and other extra cool features on YouTube. So this is the first Mini series and a Mac tutorial series. So in this series, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do um, different things on Mac. Just to be noted, I am running on Mac um, 10.6.8. I have a really old computer. It's my dad's old computer, so it is a little bit older. So I, some of the stuff I can't do. But if you have, but if you have 10.6.8. then I'd be happy to do videos showing you guys different things that you can do. So please comment below any other videos like me to do. So to get started for this one, there's built in application on your computer called QuickTime Player. You can find it in the applications folder and you can drag it to your desktop. I have it right here. So if you look, your QuickTime Player, which you can use to both play movies and to do screen recordings. And audio recordings and movie recordings. So if you go under File, you have them right here. New screen recording, new audio recording, new movie recording. So screen recording is what I'm currently doing. What it does is it records footage going on on your entire computer screen and it saves that. An audio recording, it'll just record audio. So you can set it to just your system audio, you can do your voice, but it'll just do audio. In movie recording, it'll run through your internal Mac camera or through an external camera you have hooked up to your computer and it will record a movie through your camera. So most useful application for this is like doing a um a blog or a face cam or any of those other any of those other applications. So since I can't do a stream recording right now, I'm gonna show you what the interface looks like through an audio recording. It's, a, it's the same exact thing. So as you can see right here now, you see my little voice here showing it shows me my input. But on a standard Mac, if you go under so let's say you go under iTunes. Let's just play play a song. Now the reason for this is because you go under audio recording and you look at its current selected input. It's currently selected on our built-in mi in microphone is your internal microphone. And so this will only be recording through your microphone. So in order to get this you have to switch to agro device. So as you guys can see, I went ahead and switched this to my agro device. And the reason I stopped my recording is because you can't be doing a screen recording or an audio recording and then go ahead and switch the, your inputs on, um, on another type of recording. It's just QuickTime can't handle that. So if you look at it now, my, my agro device, you see that the audio is showing here. And now, in order to build it, to get an device, you actually have to build it through your computer. So the first step you're going to need, this program is called Soundflower. So you go, I'll link to this in the description. But you see your sound, Soundflower by Rogue Amiga is a, um, a software that allows you to take, um, give you two separate types of outputs. So after you go ahead and install this, so you can find it under your, your Mac. By typing in sound flower, come up to the sound flower bed, which is how it appears on a computer. So, on the application is sound flower, but when a computer's software is known as sound flower bed. So, when you activate this, you'll get this nice little flower that pops up here on your top bar. That's how you know it's on. You can go here, your sound flower 2 channel, and your sound flower 64 channel. Now, I found that works best for. Recording is Soundflower 2 channel. So the Soundflower 2 channel selected, you want to put that as your built-in uh, output. And so that's going to take some set of just the, um, so anything on your computer going on, so for instance, if you're playing iTunes, playing a game, watching a video, or anything else, any audio that comes through your computer is going to go directly to Soundflower 2 channel. Now there are two ways that you can set up your audio after this. You can either use, um, Lion, but Linen is for um, Mac 
10.7.0 and up, so I can use that. But there'll be a video, I'll link to a video on screen now, and I'll leave it in the description to how you can set up that. If that's the route you want to go. So you can be using line, and you can go on. This same company that makes some um, own sound flower radiator line, and the link will be in the description. This first one here is go download it again. I'll leave the video link in the description right now on screen or in the description so you can go watch that if that's the option you choose. But what I have set up is I have built an aggregate device as you can see what I'm using right now. So in order to build an aggregate device, if you want to go, go to the computer and type in MIDI, you want to go audio MIDI setup. As you can see here it gives you your, your microphone, your built-in input, your built-in output, your SoundFlower 2 channel, your SoundFlower 64 channel. So as you can see from right here, we have Soundflower as our output, aggregate device as my input. But see, if I go ahead and try to create a new aggregate device, it's not going to let me. Now this is because I'm not the administrator on my computer. I go and look, my dad's old admin account is the administrator. So in order to create a new, um, so if you're not the administrator on your computer, you need to, either, you need to log in as the administrator in order to create a new aggregate device. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. As you guys can see up here now, I'm I'm on the admin account. So once I'm on the admin account, I can come up to here, do the same thing, search MIDI, go to audio MIDI setup. And now I have the ability to create an agar device. So when you create a new agar device, what you want to do is you want to choose your inputs and outputs. So I can use so I'm gonna use my built-in microphone. I can use Soundflower 2 channel, and then it'll resample it out through Soundflower 2 channel. And that's it. It's, it's as simple as that. Well, it took me forever to figure this out because you have to go to your, you have to go to the administrator or admin account. I'm not sure which one. If someone could please leave in the comments below and correct me which one it has to be, that would that'd be fantastic. But all I know is I'm neither of them. So this basically kills two birds with one stone. So I know you have to be one or the other, maybe both. So anyway, so that's how you guys how you can do that. Just simple as that to create an aggregate device once you have Soundflower installed. But you gotta make sure you're using an admin account or administrator. Again, sorry, I do not know which one it has to be. If someone correct me on that, that'd be great. So if you're done making your aggregate device, you actually need to meet, make some changes in your system settings. So you go under system preferences once again. And you go to sounds. And for your output. Make sure your output is selected as Soundflower 2 channel. If it's not your headphones, the default will be on your headphones. You have to change the Soundflower 2 channel in order to get audio. And your input, you want to change your input to your aggregate device that you just made. You can check these things, but once again, going to MIDI, pulling it up. Soundflower right there is showing you your output, aggregate device showing your input. And that's how you know you all set to go. Once you get those set up, go back to QuickTime Player, and then you should see your aggregate device will pop up right here. I went back and deleted my other one because I had no use for it, I wasn't doing anything, so. But believe me, if I would have left it in there, it'd be here. You just go ahead and select that, hit the record button, and then you make your videos. So, yeah. That's nice and simple how to, how to do screen recordings with Time Player. In the next episode, I'll show you guys how to take those recordings, how to edit them with iMovie. Then, if you already know how to use iMovie, you have another vid, video editing software. In my third video, I'll be showing you guys how to upload to YouTube and how to do YouTube annotations. And again, please comment after this mini series. Let me know what other Mac tutorials you want me to do. I'll either forward you to a link of a good strong video someone else has made or if I can't find anything that suits your needs I'll try to figure it myself and make one for you but as in terms of this video it's just over so thank you so much for watching I've been 13 signing off and I'll see you guys in the next video bye
Oh, I'm sorry. Round one. The first 15 minutes are a 